Sketchbook. Markers. It's drawing time! <laughs> So last week these Ohu brush markers came out. Oh, that's a really pretty color scheme. And in my review video, I didn't really go into depth about using them. So I thought today I could show like a step-by-step -step process of how I like to use markers, showcasing specifically Ohu brush markers. So there's kind of like two different ways that I've used markers in the past. One way starts by sketching with a Prismacolor color erase pencil. And the other way uses a normal, <laughs> good old fashioned pencil. And I'm gonna try my best to showcase both ways and I'm sure there are many other ways that you are to come up with too. So the way I used to do it is with a regular pencil and I would sketch something out. So let's start there. Now I haven't drawn anything today so we gotta warm up and I like to warm up by drawing my favorite thing. Faces and sometimes there's a body attached. Be nice and loose kind of like warm up those hands. Make sure that the eyes are lined up. That's something I still mess up to this day even with this nice guideline. You know what, I just remembered something. My character Wheels was kind of designed by using Ohu markers. So maybe we should kind of draw her to christen in my new brush markers. <laughs> Not to be cruel to this character. <laughs> I always did a better job of like lining up the eyes in digital art because you have that flip the canvas tool. It's kind of hard to do <laughs> traditionally, especially in a sketchbook. I could go in and color this, but I kind of want to color in something bigger since we have all this paper and all these markers. But if you're having trouble getting your markers to be less patchy, I would suggest starting smaller. Make sure you can learn how to fill in smaller sections without it being patchy and then move into larger sections. But yeah, I want to draw wheels. <laughs> so wheels is my character. She has her hair up in these I used to see them a lot when I was in elementary school. I think I even had a pair. And she has pretty curly hair. I'm just gonna draw it in big fat sections first. But I like where it is before I go in and add too many details. Okay, see, these ears are lined up this way, but her face is tilted this way. So we need to solve that problem here by drawing some more guidelines. So raise these ears and then line them out, line them up proportionally with the face. All right, so Wheel's outfit, she has a high-waisted sort of almost like a tennis skirt. And then she wears this really oversized shirt that's tucked into it. And then she has roller skates, but I didn't leave enough room for those. Here, ooh, if I pull her legs up like this, can you see? I might be able to draw her roller skates. So then her skirt has these like two sections here that kind of fan out. They're like pleats. And then sometimes I draw buttons. I haven't really finalized her What's that? What's those called? Shoot, I know the word. In sewing, you have your little bits and bobs. Uh. Oh, and then her shirt has this fun meh face. <laughs> so it's kind of like a pencil skirt, except for the little pleats. They allow it to kind of billow. And I kind of always pictured it being a skirt. Finish up these arms. I'm kind of doing things out of order, aren't I? And her little bracelets. All right, now the last thing I need to do before I move on to the next step is finalize these legs. So I'm just going to lightly erase them and try not to erase them completely so that I could still kind of see some of the work that I've already done. And let's try and just pick our favorite lines. This is an angle of the foot I find very difficult to draw. I'm just gonna try to pull this like a little further down. If I had more paper, I'd like it like right about here, <laughs> preferably. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna pull that leg down anyway. It's feeling a little too busy down here and it's not making a whole lot of sense. There we go. Oh, I like that so much better. <laughs> yes. Now it looks like she's skating a little bit. Now I wanna bring this down a little bit too. We could try it. Hey, the night is young. I like this better too. Hey, we're on a roll today. <laughs> All right, so there's my sketch that I did with the pencil. So then the next step would be to use a fine liner because you don't really want to use alcohol-based markers on top of pencil. They can kind of smudge, they can get kind of stain the tip of your nib and it's just, you know, overall kind of a muddy look. So I don't like to do that. 
what I would do is switch over to a fine liner and it's always important to test your fine liners with your markers before you, you know, go in with your whole drawing and ink the whole thing. So what I like to do is just write the name of them. So we're gonna test a couple right now. There's a Sharpie. We'll see what happens. I already know what's gonna happen, but I just wanna, just wanna demonstrate. So this is a plum chester. And it's always important to give them ample time to dry because right when you lay down some pens they'll smudge and sometimes if you wait they work a little better all right so now that these all have had lots of time to dry i'm gonna grab one of these markers first i'm just gonna take a line and go straight down all right so right off the bat just with like one smooth line you can kind of see that the pen is definitely smudging the sharpie has a small amount of smudge and it looks like the plum chester Ooh, the pilot. I did not expect that one not to bleed. Micron and the who. And then for double testing, go over it. And you can kind of see how that's muddying up the green color. You see the color difference here when it's like picking up a bunch of the black versus when it's not. The pen's definitely a little smudgy too. Wow, okay, so the Pilot G2 doesn't bleed. That I, for some reason I thought it did. Maybe that's why I have it on my desk. It doesn't. <laughs> Micron. Good. Well, actually, the micron is picking up if I go over it too much. But if you're quick with it, it looks like it's fine. And then the ohu is already faint to begin with, but it does not seem to bleed. So, boop -ba boo We now know we should either use the G2, Plum Chester, the ohu, and maybe not so much the micron. Maybe the micron needs more time to dry. I've kind of heard you need to give these. These are the ones I've always been told to use, and uh, no, they didn't even step up. Stack up next to the G2. G2 down immediately. Oop. Yeah, it does smudge. So that's one of those ones you just have to let dry. Interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> we did learn something new today. This is going in a direction I didn't expect. The cool thing about this technique, if you do pencil then pen, is you don't really have to worry about what colors you want to use yet. Personally, is I like to just lighten the sketch first go over it and just roll a kneaded eraser or you can use a regular eraser and just be very light with it and this just lightens all your lines and it makes them a lot less distracting when you're trying to line it you don't want to erase it completely to the point where you can't see it either <laughs> boom let's go in and do the face first Now one thing I do know about this pen though is you have to be careful and you don't want to even smudge it with your hand while it's drying because uh, yeah, you can make a you can make a mess. You'll just smudge that line like two feet across your paper. Not pretty. And then it just comes down to grabbing and redrawing all the lines you like the best. I try to make the lines sketchy where I can. It's a little difficult with a pen because it can be a little nerve wracking. But if you can manage it, it definitely goes a long way in making your line art a lot less harsh. Sometimes not connecting the lines can help too. My digital art days have kind of taught me like, connect all the lines so you can use the paint bucket too. <laughs> but uh, it's just really not the case with uh, traditional art. It's not really necessary in digital art these days either. There's so many cool programs that can like detect lines and things like that. Being especially kind of sketchy around the hair because you know, hair is not like one solid shape as I've drawn it. So I'm hoping that'll help. And I kind of messed up. And I'm trying to play it off like I did it on purpose. Now this face on her shirt is usually orange. So I'm gonna try and do my best not to use <laughs> a line art for that until last. As long as I can remember that it needs to be there. I won't forget, it's one of my favorite parts of her design. Now you do have to be extra careful if you're doing areas like this where you go over it multiple times because those will take longer to dry. <laughs> Little friendship bracelets. All right, there we go. Now we need to make sure before we erase these pencil lines that everything is dry. Otherwise we'll get that same smudging problem. I'm actually gonna go ahead and use a heavy, more heavy duty eraser for this. I don't like to have eraser shavings. I honestly hate them, but sometimes you just have to bite the bullet. And I'm just glad I have the kneaded eraser for like <laughs> most of the sketching process because then I don't have to worry about eraser shavings the entire time. Ooh, did that smudge? Well then, guess I need to wait a little longer. 
I'm gonna give that a lot more time to dry. <laughs> I don't wanna ruin it. So we're gonna move on to the other technique I like, which is to start with a color erase colored pencil. You can obviously use whatever color you want, but I like to use the pinker tones because they blend really well with the skin. Like any skin tone I've ever used, it works really well. So we're gonna draw another wheels here <laughs> and I can kind of show you. Actually, let's draw her smaller so that we can fit her feet in here. She's supposed to be short. I don't know if I did a good job portraying that there. But let me try a little harder this time. Big swooshy hair that moves as she skates. Let me try and make it a little bit expressive like she's moving. That front leg needs to be, her weight should be like centered on it, I think, because it looks like she's kind of leisurely skating. Now this sketch is a lot sketchier than my pencil one. And color use pencils aren't quite as erasable as obviously just regular graphite, but that's okay. The point in doing this technique is to kind of get that sketchy look and you can kind of see some of the lines under the marker because we're going to add the marker on top of the pencil next instead of going in with line art first. And I can actually do some rendering because a lot of that will actually show through when we're using the markers on top of them. There we've got that. And now we can start adding in the actual color. <laughs> so let me do a few swatches. This looks like it's the color of her shirt. This is why I recommend swatching all your markers, but don't leave it out in the sun or they will fade. <laughs> and you just do it right on top of the pencil. And then we're gonna go in and add line art afterwards. And this makes it really easy to use like colored lines. If you like to use those to accent different elements because you can see the colors you've used right on the page. You can see how using that brush tip is really helpful to get into small spaces while also like filling in large areas without having to grab a whole new marker. Well, this is a bit of a larger area, so it might take a couple coats to make it nice and clean. I'm also not using specific marker paper, which might affect the results. Another cool thing about alcohol-based markers is how you can layer them and give them fun new colors. So even though you only have a 48 set, you can layer them in different varieties and have way more colors. And you see how these two pigtails are kind of overlapping? It's gonna be hard to see the difference between those two. So I'm gonna layer them with another color, but I'm not just gonna make it a darker brown. I'm gonna layer it with maybe a purple. Like let's try P3, which is pastel violet. And you don't wanna use too light because then it can lift. So let me just make sure it's actually darkening it and not lifting. That actually looks really good. And because it's bit pastel, it's not going to overly darken it either. Just gives us a little bit of contrast. And because it's doing that, I, f I feel safe enough color directly up against that. And we can actually darken it up again with the original hair color. And it'll look like that. I think I'm gonna fill in that whole back pigtail though. It is lifting the brown just a little. So just by going over with our potato brown again, We'll be able to get that pigment we're looking for. And then we're just gonna add some like kind of extra strokes, which will blend out. I just want them to look a little bit hairier, you know, because they are made of hair. A good thing to know when you're doing it in this technique instead of that one is that it's going to look very messy and patchy before you add the line art, which is gonna just clean everything up. There are some artists that don't use line art and it looks really awesome, but I'm not one of those people. <laughs> you can kind of see, I haven't even finished the face. Her eyes are still dots and her mouth's like one line. That's something I like to do last with the line art. I designed this character to use a lot of the vibrant colors that come with cheaper brush sets. So that's kind of why she's like my Ohu girl. <laughs> I'm also gonna go ahead and use this purple to shade a little bit of the yellow as well. See how that looks. And you can kind of see how just the pencil created some nice tone without us even having to layer some more markers. And you see how fine of a point I can get with the tip of the brush marker? If you're very light-handed. It's a little bit dark for her, but it's kind of our only option in this set, so. We'll have to take what we can get. You gotta make some compromises when you buy the cheaper markers. And I also like to do eyebrows with a pen instead of a brush marker. 
And the more you go over the color erase pencil, the more it's going to blend into like an oblivion. So where I need those lines, I try to be very soft with my markers. You can kind of see how we can just subtly still see the face, which is perfect for adding the line art. Here's some of the colors that I used, if you're interested. <laughs> then next it's time to do some lines. For the face, I like to use some like reds or pinks. Maybe this like purple actually. Then we just line the face. And this is gonna be a lot less harsh looking than the black line we're gonna use over there. And obviously the more you like experiment, the more you'll learn which colors you like to use where, and then you can actually use them in this technique. But this is just kind of how I like to go about it. I just find it works really well. And because our color scheme is, is very on the pink side, I could probably even use this all over. I like to use black or a dark brown. We'll do dark brown since she's on the younger side. And just add those eyelashes. Mm, my favorite part. See, that's gonna look black next to all these pastel colors. So that was probably a good choice. And then I'm gonna go back to that dark brown and do the shirt. Even though I could probably get away with the pink. We probably should do the hair too. Now I do want to try and use some of the pink and add it to her nose and go back to the salmon pink, which was her skin tone and blend that out. And do it with the cheeks too. If you've tested your pens and they don't hold up well next to alcohol-based markers, don't do this. But this is just the order I like to do it because I know that they work pretty well together. I'm gonna make her ears really pink. Just think that'll be cute. And then I can also just kind of add some shading to the face. What if we add some uh, pink to the hair? You can kind of see how this creates a nice sketchy look. That's really fun to play around with. It has a bit more of like a mixed media vibe because you can like obviously layer the pencil on top again where you want it. And you'll get something like this. Look at that precious little face. I'm gonna go ahead and use the brush tip and try to do some writing. Her head is very, very big. If it's not dry by now, I don't know what. <laughs> this was a bad choice then. <laughs> Eraser, shavings everywhere. All right, so now we can actually just go ahead and color. So we can use the same old colors we used before. And I want you to see just how different the colors look when they're not layered on top of the pencils. They're gonna be a little bit more vibrant, but also by using the pencils over here, the color scheme's a little bit more cohesive. So we have to be extra careful when picking the colors to make sure that they look good next to each other, but I kind of already did that. So hopefully this will turn out. Let's color in the hair. It's a very large section. Try and get it, try to fill it in without any streaks. Now don't forget that these will bleed through your sketchbook. So if you have a drawing on the other side, you might want to think about uh, doing it on a different page or doing it on its own separate piece of paper. Now this one, I drew her eyebrows a lot bigger so I can just color them in with the marker. And there's the hair. You can kind of see how you gotta layer it to get an even tone. Sometimes it takes a couple coats, just like paint does. There must have been a lighter tone in the old Ohu markers for skin to be used next to the yellow. Like it's almost yellow on its own. And she has a yellow shirt and I don't want, you know, them to be competing with each other. I like to color it kind of like I'm following the vertices of the face so that there, if there are streaks, they kind of just blend in. Oh, I should be doing those one at a time or they'll dry and be harder to blend. You see how well those blend? Ooh, so fun. That's what's great about alcohol-based markers. Oh, and then I want those pink ears. Just kind of keep layering it till it looks the way you want it to. Back in the day, I used to go crazy with the blush. I mean, maybe I still do, but I went crazier, let's just say. Now this leg back here, it's kind of like going off into the distance. So I'm gonna color this in a little bit more pink. And then the last important bit is our little smiley face. Just try to draw our face in. There we go. 
And then the final touch of the white gel pen. You can add like highlights to cheeks or to the nose and then the eyes as well. And there you kind of have two different techniques. You can use the same markers and get two completely different looks depending on what you're going for. Something a little bit more clean or something a little bit more sketchy. I feel like I didn't really do that one justice. That's kind of the way I usually go about it. And this is kind of how the way I used to do it a little bit more. As your marker dries out, it will be more difficult to fill larger areas. But these have kind of been having a little bit of trouble right off the bat. So I don't know if they're just not all that juicy. <laughs> but there you go. You can kind of see that the larger the area you're trying to fill, the harder it's going to be to get that solid color. So there we have it. <laughs> There, I felt another spread in my sketchbook. This was so much fun using the brand new Ohu brush tip markers. I will have all the tools I used linked in the description if there's any of those that you're interested in like researching a little bit more about. And if you have Ohu markers or Copic markers or any alcohol-based marker, I hope maybe showing you the two different ways that I like to use them. Maybe you learned something that you didn't know before. I don't know. <laughs> As always, I want to thank you guys for watching and I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles.